This video is brought to you by Pro Star Tables. Has this ever happened to you? Or this? Hi pool players, it's the Terminator and welcome back to another episode of Terminator Tips. In this episode, we're going to discuss playing position for balls that are hanging in the pocket. These are some of the most deceptive shots in a game of pool. They look super easy. The ball cannot be missed basically, but to play position is a whole different animal. In this episode, I'm going over some traps, solutions and some quiz style situations. So let's hop onto the table right now. Let's get going and make you a better player. Okay, pool players, here we go. Let's start off with a nice situation there. We're playing a game of nine ball. We have three balls left and we actually got ball in hand from our opponent. We want to get from the seven ball to the eight ball and finally, of course, to the nine ball for the win. The biggest mistake that amateur pool players make is they pocket this ball. They leave themselves somewhere in the middle of the table, leaving themselves fairly straight in on the eight. And from there, it is super difficult to get from this ball all the way to the other side of the table. But you're thinking the ball is in the pocket. This should be super easy. Making the ball is super easy. Playing position is a whole different animal, like I said before. The problem when you're straight in on this eight ball is that it's very unnatural to get to the other side of the table. The side pocket's in the way when we're trying to go off this rail and into this angle here and also with the top spin when you think i have to hit it hard to get down table this is what happens a lot to amateur pool players the cue ball dies off the rail because the top spin becomes actually a draw and it slows down you will never get the action to come down table it is unnatural let's look at the correct solution here's the correct way to play these shots that are hanging in the pocket when you place the cue ball along the rail, the short rail, or the long rail, it is much easier to get to the other side of the table. Let me demonstrate. When I have the cue ball here, all I have to do basically is contact the eight ball about a half ball with a little bit of high left. I don't have to hit it hard and I'm coming towards the middle of the long rail there beautifully towards the nine. I'm not doing anything. This is just knowledge. You can do this too. Let's keep in mind that the nine ball is fairly close to this corner pocket. So it's easier from here. It's more natural coming into the line of position for the next shot. Remember those videos about getting into the line of position. I'm gonna place a few links in the top for you guys. If the nine ball would be on the opposite side of this rail, now it would make more sense to play position from this rail. Because again, if we're going to make contact with the eight ball at about a half a ball, this time with a little bit of stun and right spin, not too much, it's really natural to go middle diamond, middle diamond and coming into position. Super easy actually, just a bit of knowledge required. So pool players, let's get back to this first situation. We had ball in hand on the seven. It's quiz time. When we look at the position of the seven, eight and nine ball especially, which reel do we want to use to get on the eight so we can get easy position for the nine? Is it this reel here or is it this reel here? Pause the video. Let me know in the comments which reel you choose, short reel or long reel. The answer is the short rail, remember, because from here it was really easy to come to this middle diamond and the nine wants to go there, so we want to get on this side of the table. So what I recommend now is taking ball in hand, shooting the seven in the side with some follow, going off the side rail and laying it nicely on that short rail right there. I have better speed control than when I would do it in one way without touching the rail. If I come short, I'm in a bit of trouble. Here I got that sweet position to go two rails, 
to the nine ball for the win. Another nice example here in a game of nine ball once again. We don't have ball in hand this time. The amateur mistake here would be to pocket this seven ball and leave yourself in the middle of the table as such. From here, it's much harder to reach for starters and it is very hard to get back to this nine. There's an easier two ways to do this. What's interesting about this shot is that we have to consider now if we're a left-handed player or a right-handed player. For a left-handed player, it'd be a nice solution just to stun over to the rail. From here, we have a nice reach and we can go easily one, two, three rails into position for the nine. As a right-handed player, I have to be aware of that. I have to draw back just slightly so I can reach this shot on the eight ball. I can just reach it from here. I'm gonna hit about a half a ball on the eight because I don't want this breaking effect that we've seen before. I can demonstrate that for you if I hit it too full. See, the cue ball dies. It's going to keep spinning forward. We don't want that. We want to hit it about a half ball, some high left, about 10 o'clock on the cue ball. And we want to go for a middle diamond, middle diamond situation, coming into position for the nine and giving myself a chance to win this game. Here's an example where the eight and the nine are in the same position, but this time I want to roll forward and play position for that short reel and go one, two into this line for the nine. That's much easier to do this time than going all the way around, getting to this reel or the amateur mistake, stopping the ball and having a lot of trouble next to get down table. Just roll the ball in. Get yourself as close as you can to that rail. That right there is fine. Make sure you hit this ball, about half a ball hit, with some high right spin this time, two o'clock, and come down table naturally for the nine and the win. Here's a nice example for you eight ball players. Our opponent is playing stripes. He just missed. And he left us on our last two solids and the eight ball. We could just roll this ball in like maybe some amateurs would prefer. But now how on earth are we going to go back down table for the eight ball? We have to be almost Houdini. We can't take this route because there's all kinds of traffic in the way that we can hit like such and leave ourselves with a tough shot on the eight. What's the correct way to play this? Again, like I said before, try to play position close to the rails. This time we don't want to use this rail. We saw that was too tough, but we want to get to this rail because there's an opening to that side of the table from there. So it's all speed control from here. Try to lay it as close as you can to that rail right there. That can be done with some practice. And from here, we find ourselves in a new situation before we went two rails. But this time, there's nothing natural about that. The ten's in the way. There's balls here. And the eight wants to go in this pocket. It's not over here this time. So it's no use for us to go to this side of the table. We want to stay on this side of the table. How do we do that? By hitting the three much fuller than before. Before it was a half ball hit. Now we want to go for a three quarter ball hit. So almost full. And with a bit of draw and some left spin, we're going to spin down table off this rail and come into this position here for the win. Let's see if we can pull it off. Putting about eight o'clock spin on it. This was a clock. Don't want to hit it full because then nothing's going to happen. I have to make contact with this rail and swing down table. Did you see that spin giving it an extra little kick? That's what we need. Now we've won the game. And here again, a nice nine ball situation. Most amateurs would be totally satisfied pocketing the seven in the corner, stopping the cue ball and playing the eight from here. 
as we've seen now, that is much harder than it looks. The correct way to play this shot, and most professionals would do this, is to make the seven and draw the cue ball back to the short rail with a bit of practice. You can get it there quite often. And from here, we see we got that nice angle to go two rails now, down table for the ninth. With some high left. About a half ball hit. Try to get to that middle diamond. I got close, but here, great shot for the win. And here's a nice final situation for a game of eight ball. Let me know which rail you would play position for. Would it be this short rail here, or would you use maybe a bit of high left and going for this rail here? Which one is your favorite and why? Leave it in the comments. I read them all. I'm very interested about this one. Press pause. Now I'll give you the solution. In my book, both solutions could work actually, but the first one going to the short rail is a bit easier for speed control. However, if you can master the other one, that is totally fine also. I'm going to show you both routes right now. If we will knock this ball in, just go into the first short rail. As such, before we spoke about going two rails for the eight or the nine that's close to this position here. Now it's on the other side. We spoke about staying on line here with some low left, but there's blockers. What do we do? Now we have to cross in front of the eight for this position. Basically, it's the same hit as before. We want to try to hit it about half ball, maybe a hair thinner with a bit of stun this time. We don't want it to curl with the top spin. With some stun, we want to keep it flat. Try to hit the rail here. Let's see if I can pull one off. You don't have to hit it hard. Touch of left. Right there, the aiming is the most important thing. You don't want to hit that ball too thick. Like I said, shot number two can work also with a touch of high left. Let's say 10 o'clock, if it was a clock. I want to get to the other side of the table. Not that easy. This would work better for a right-handed player. I would definitely recommend the other shot for a left-hander. But here we can just reach this and with some stun and right spin. Again, we want to touch this rail, try to get to the middle diamond, middle diamond, and then for a shot on the eight. Half ball hit, some right spin, right there. Nicely done. And we can get out and win the game. These are all examples to show you what you can do with some knowledge. The last thing you want to do is get yourself straight in on these shots from the middle table, from the spot that is so hard to get position from. You're going to fail more than you're going to succeed. With this knowledge playing to the rails for position, you open up your angles, your natural way to play position for the key ball. Now I can hear you thinking, what if you don't have the opportunity to play position? Your opponent missed the ball, leaves you hanging in the pocket, and you have to play it from a funky angle. Exactly that is what I'm going to cover in next week's video, where we're going to look at balls that are hanging in the pocket, and we need to play tricky positions from straight in angles. There you go, pool players. I really hope you enjoyed this episode. I'm sure you got some new knowledge out of this one. Make sure to check out all the other great content on the channel. There's tips and lessons here uploaded weekly. And remember, if you're interested in the mental side of the game, head over to terminatorcollege.com. Check out all those courses that are waiting there for you. Take care.